Today, I'm going to show you two different methods to resize the center coil of a mainspring that's too big for your barrel arbor so that you can get a perfect fit every time. See if this sounds familiar. You needed a new mainspring, so you ordered a generic replacement. When you went to install it, you found out that the inner coil is too big for the arbor, so your new mainspring won't stay hooked. Naturally, you try squeezing it to make it smaller, and you end up breaking it off right by the hook hole. You can order a new mainspring, but you'll have the exact same problem again. This is where understanding a little bit about tempering metal can come in handy. The problem that you're having with the inner coil breaking is that it's just too brittle to bend. So you need to temper the coil to soften it a little bit. Tempering is just the process of reheating the hard metal to a specific temperature to make the metal softer. The higher the temperature, the softer the metal becomes. Now, in order to help shape the coil after the coil has been tempered, I like to shellac the arbor to a bench block to hold it in place so that I can shape the coil around it. Once the coil has been shaped, then it's just a matter of removing the arbor from the block and cleaning it up with some denatured alcohol. When installing a mainspring, you want the coil to fit tight to the arbor so that when the spring is fully unwound, the spring doesn't become unhooked. I want this coil to be tight in this area right here. The first way to temper the coil is with a soldering iron. This soldering iron allows me to pinpoint the heat right on the inner coil of the mainspring. And this is really ideal for two reasons. First, since this soldering iron has a digital temperature display, I know exactly how much heat is being applied to the spring. In this case, it's 440 degrees. And secondly, it's better for the spring's performance to limit the tempering to the part of the spring that actually needs to be manipulated. You want to leave as much of the spring unchanged as possible. I leave the mainspring on the soldering iron for several minutes until I get the color I'm looking for. I'll keep it on the soldering iron until the coil turns to a light straw color. Tempering changes the color of the steel as it gets hotter. At first it starts turning to a very pale yellow and then turns to a light straw color that we're looking for. As the steel gets hotter, it then turns to a dark straw or even a brown color. Now, once you get to about 540 degrees, it starts turning purple and it goes all the way up to that dark blue color that we look for when we're blowing screws at around 590 degrees. As the temperature continues to increase, then that dark blue color starts to lighten again to a medium blue and then an even lighter blue all the way until it turns to gray. Once the coil has been softened, I use a pair of round needle nose pliers to hold on to the end of the inner coil by clamping down right where the hole for the hook is. These pliers will not only help shape that inner coil, but they also prevent the coil from getting crushed at that weak spot by the hook hole. I use a set of Dumont double lot tweezers because they're stiff enough for the next step, which is actually shaping the coil.
when I shape the coil, I find that by placing the tweezer as close as I can to the hook hole, and then by pulling the tweezer across the spring, the spring will start forming to the rounded jaw of the pliers. You may have to do this several times to get it to form to the jaws, but it will. And if it doesn't, you probably need to temper it again. What I'm really going for on the reshaping at this point is just to get the coil a little smaller than the actual arbor is. And then I can finish up the shaping on the arbor itself. Now, sometimes you'll run into a situation where the coil is a lot larger than the arbor, or it's a really thick spring, or maybe you don't even have a soldering iron. The second method you can use is by tampering the coil with a spirit lamp. I use denatured alcohol in mine because it burns really clean and doesn't leave any black soot behind. Just be aware that spirit lamps can get up to well over a thousand degrees, which is way more than you need for tempering. So you only want to put it in the flame for a couple seconds at a time. Another tool that you might have that you can use to form the coil is a balance tack. Now, it's not as easy to form and to manipulate the inner coil as it is the round nose pliers, but it'll work. It takes a little bit to maneuver the coil around so you can work on it, but you use the same method of squeezing and pulling like I did when I was using the round nose pliers. And guys, that's really all there is to it. Thanks for watching.